Yared, Community Manager here at Whitethorn Games. And I'm Britt, our Chief Accessibility Officer. Welcome to our annual Whitethorn Winter Showcase. We've got a show full of exciting news, from updates on your favorite upcoming titles, to special guests, and even a few surprises. So, please be sure to stick around until the end. But before we get into what's coming up, let's take a moment to look back on what Whitethorn accomplished in 2023. And what a year it was. We welcomed Venti the Cat as our brand new office supervisor, and we shared laughs while raising funds for Extra Life during our 18-hour charity marathon stream. We got to meet and play games with friends and fans at PAX East in Boston and PAX West in Seattle. And we launched Deep Cover, an educational game for older adults that helps them recognize and prevent online scams and fraud. Developed by our own internal team in collaboration with the University of Buffalo's DART program, and to celebrate everything that you helped us accomplish this year. We've got a bunch of different sales going on across our library, so please be sure to check out your favorite platform stores. 2023 was also an amazing year for Whitethorn titles in terms of our accessibility practices. Last year during Whitethorn Winter, we debuted the accessibility segment of our showcase, during which we shared some accessibility features alongside the announcement of Magical Delicacy. We started a bi-weekly discussion about accessibility on our Discord called Unlocking Accessibility. We also attended the ever-amazing Games Accessibility Conference and learned a lot from their wonderful speakers. We learned a lot this year from practice, from testing, and from listening to our community. So thank you for participating and helping us grow our accessibility toolkit. We're really excited to share some more throughout the show, so stay tuned. First up, let's take a look at some exciting news about one of our titles coming out this year, Botany Manor. Hey everyone, I'm Laura and I'm the creative director at Balloon Studios. Today I'm here with a few other people from the Botany Manor team. Uh, hi, I'm Tim and I'm the 3D environment artist on Botany Manor. 
I'm Kit and I'm the 2D artist on Botany Manor as well as doing a bit of game and narrative design. We'd like to answer a few more personal questions about the development of Botany Manor and of course at the same time show you a little bit more about what we've been working on. So the thing I'm most proud of is that we've created a space that feels like it could exist. So I've become so familiar with this space that now I wish I could visit in real life. I'm really proud of having worked on a game with a mature female protagonist with a story that shines a light on what it's like to be locked out of a space like academia and how detrimental that is to something like furthering the science of botany. I'm probably most proud of the moment the player sees the manor for the first time because I spent a long time carefully set dressing the view onto the manor and I really wanted to emulate that big grand impression you get when you visit one of these places in real life. The space that really took my breath away when I first saw it was the library because the lighting and atmosphere in that space is so lovely. But also I think Arabella would have an incredible collection of books in that library. So for me it would be the back garden folly. Yeah, I can imagine sitting there with a cup of tea and just looking over the view. Most enjoyed things that had a historical reference that we then took and made our own, it's like the cider apple poster where I got to illustrate existing heritage apples and like the moth calendar as well that's based on an old paper object that we then kind of twisted a little bit and made it work for the game. It was really fun. A lot of the interactive props, um, my favourite being the cider press, just because it's making the prop was, was a fun process in itself, but then actually getting to see the, um, like the iterative process going into the, the interaction and then the final payoff when you actually squeeze an apple down just makes it such a rewarding experience. I probably had most fun working on the robin behaviour. There's one puzzle where you have to lure a little robin from feeder to feeder and the robin is just so cute and it's make, it made me laugh. Something that I've taken with me that I'm really thankful is that wherever I go, I'm always looking at even the tiniest little weeds, like growing between cracks in the pavement and wondering, oh, how have they adapted to do that? I was really excited to learn that the puzzles were all based on something, at least a little bit based on something that actually happens in nature. So we hope you enjoyed this mini interview and if you're excited about the game don't forget to follow us on various social media and wish us the game on Steam. Talking about Steam, we're currently also live in Steam Next Fest with a brand new demo so be sure to check that out as well. Being a first-person game, Botany Manor has a lot of accessibility features to help reduce motion sickness, like adjustable camera sensitivity and smoothing, adjustable field of view and crosshair size, a vignette mode that slightly darkens the edges of the screen, and camera transitions for sitting and looking at clues that creates a blink effect instead of a camera sway. There is a single stick mode you can use to walk around the grounds with a free look camera toggle or button hold. There's also a plain text overlay for reading clues and a sprint toggle. Botany Manor has no time limits for solving puzzles either, so you can play at your leisure. I can't wait to just wander the grounds of the manor tending to my plants. And for the rest of you aspiring botanists out there, we have a limited edition herbarium available in our store. Pre-order one now and you can chronicle your own botanical journey of discovery. Next up, here's a little information about the upcoming cooking platformer, Magical Delicacy.
Magical Delicacy has a ton of great accessibility features. You can tailor your platforming experience with an easy platforming mode that removes various hazards and slows down moving platforms. For greater visibility, you can highlight flora, turn on high contrast platforms, desaturate the background, and turn up nighttime brightness. To help you on your adventures and adventures, you can scale the UI and choose from different fonts, autoplay the dialogue, turn off text scrolling, turn off time-based minigames, and toggle off button holds. You'll also be able to customize your input sensitivity, haptics, and remap your inputs on PC. Make sure you've got your passport in hand, because we're setting sail to uncharted waters in Mithrek, Ambrosia Island. Hi, I'm Alex from Polygon Treehouse. We're the developers behind Mithrek Ambrosia Island. In Mithrek, you get to make friends with the long lost Greek gods. Today, we're going to take a look at exactly how you do that. Let's go! The first step to making a new friend is to, of course, meet them in the first place. Each islander lives in a different location and some are harder to reach than others. Hello. One of the first gods you'll meet is Hermes, the messenger god. Uh. Huh. He's not used to visitors, so he may be a little bit jittery the first time you say hello. Now that you've met an islander, you're going to want to get to know them a bit better. You can ask them about various topics and try to find out what makes them tick. Hmm. Who knows, maybe there's something you can help them out with. To earn the trust of the gods, you can help them out with something around the island. <laughs> For example, Hermes wants you to find his pet gulls and feed them his leftover snacks. Each god's needs are different, and some requests may be stranger than others. Once an islander has warmed you, they'll add their radar signal to your Ambrosidex device. You can use this like a metal detector to find any items they might have lost. You'll find all kinds of weird and wonderful items as you explore. The trick is to find out which god they belong to. When you return mementos to their rightful owner, something special happens. The items provide a spark, triggering the god to suddenly remember a long-forgotten memory. Each memory reveals more about the god's past and brings you a step closer to solving the mystery of Ambrosia Island. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to welcoming you to Ambrosia Island later this year.
mithraic to Ambrosia Island help the Greek gods find mementos they've lost using the Ambrosia Dex, which has a radar function that provides visual, audio, and haptic cues when you're getting close to hidden treasures. You can explore the island with a sprint assist toggle, which you can tailor with key remapping alongside most actions. Choose between light or dark mode text bubbles for the sans serif text, and further customize your experience by turning off text scrolling, toggle dialog autoplay, and adjust the autoplay speed to relax and enjoy the tales. You can embark on your sunny island getaway later this year. And for a look at more of Mythrex's accessibility features, as well as any of our other titles, please take a look at the Whitethorn Games website. Next, we'd like to take a second to talk about one of our allies, Safe in Our World, a charity organization focused on mental health and games. To share a little bit more about video games and mental health, here are Sky and Rosie from Safe in Our World. Hi everyone, my name's Rosie and I am the Content and Community Manager at Safe in Our World. If you haven't heard of Safe in Our World, we are a mental health charity devoted to the video games industry specifically and we aim to eliminate mental health stigma across the planet and across our industry to make it a safer place for everybody to work. Hello, I'm Sky, the Partnerships and Training Manager at Safe in Our World. One of the things that we do that is so important is sharing life-saving resources and information on our website. We also offer a wealth of free training globally so that there is no barrier to people being able to learn more about themselves and their well-being. Using games as a vehicle to help describe mental health and mental ill health specifically is such a powerful concept and a really interesting medium to be able to express these really raw emotions, which is one of the things that we try and work on at Safe in Our World. It's about storytelling and by highlighting games that really represent mental health in an accurate and responsible way is key to global empathy to allowing people to understand the breadth of, of video games and the stories that they can tell and see the link in, in well-being and games. We care about the well-being of the people who work on the games that we love, so one of the things that we offer the global games industry is our Level Up Mental Health program, where we support companies to better implement mental health and well-being related policies in the workplace. We hope that more companies will unite with us and commit to change in the way that we deal with mental health in the games industry to make it a safer and more equitable place and so people can thrive. One of the things that we're really passionate about in Safe in Our World is inclusivity within gaming. Everybody should be able to play games and gaming should be for everyone, which is why we're really thrilled to be a part of the Winter Showcase, knowing all of the work that Whitethorn have done already behind the scenes, um, looking at approachability, accessibility and representation within characters of the games that they produce. If you'd like to learn more about the charity and what we do, you can visit safeinourworld.org or follow us at Safe in Our World on all social media. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the showcase. Thanks, Sky and Rosie. Right now, you can support a great cause by picking up the Safe in Our World Steam Bundle, featuring a collection of cozy games, including Calico. All proceeds from the bundle go towards supporting mental health initiatives within the games industry. If you'd like to learn more about Safe in Our World and the amazing work that they do, please head to safeinourworld.org. Ever wondered what would happen if the worlds of fishing and skateboarding collided? We'll hop on your board and get ready to cast out. Here's Zach to talk a little bit about Skatefish. Hey, this is Zach, lead developer and producer on Skatefish. Our team has been hard at work at our unique blend of fishing and skateboarding, and we're excited to reveal a release date for the game. So check out this trailer and stay tuned for more news on Skatefish.
Skatefish, you can adjust the input strength sensitivity as a multiplier for spins. You can enable an option to automatically catch tricks to prevent them from spinning too far. Change the board orientation on your screen for maximum trick comfort. You can change the input method to two fingers, single finger, or buttons, which let you press a series of buttons with no time limit, then an execute button to perform the trick. You can also adjust gameplay speed. Now we'd like to highlight another one of our allies in decreasing the stigma around mental health in games. Take this. Here's a look at what they're doing to help build a supportive and welcoming community. For over 10 years, Take This has provided hope, expertise, insight, and mental health support to the gaming community. Take This was founded on the idea that it's dangerous to go alone. The games can bring community, connection, empowerment, and joy into people's lives. All of them positive forces in our mental health and well-being. Take This supports game players, developers, and content creators with free mental health information, research, and resources at takethis.org. Our collection of mental health resources are curated to support the community across the wellness spectrum. From hotlines and warm lines to content written by industry leading experts on mental health topics that matter to gamers. Our AFK program was the first mental health support space at conventions. More than just a quiet room, our AFK rooms are filled with trained volunteers and licensed mental health professionals to provide empathic listening, mental health education, and a quiet, moderated space at conventions which may be otherwise overwhelming. Because community is the heart of what we do, the Take This Discord provides a friendly and non-judgmental online community regardless of where you are in the world or what time zone you're in. You can join our community at discord.gg forward slash take this org and be the first to hear about upcoming events and volunteer opportunities. For more than a decade, Take This has supported our game community and we need your support to keep our mental health mission going. Donate to Take This and be a hero to the entire game community. TakeThis.org, support, community, and mental wellness. Next up, we have two back-to-back -back surprises for you. Please take a look. That's right. The mobile version of Witchwood is out now on iOS and Android devices. Also by popular demand, Lake is out for delivery and arrives on Nintendo Switch very soon. But the announcements don't stop there. 
we have a few words to share from a dev studio that we're excited to welcome into the Whitethorn Games family. Take a peek. Hey, I'm Nick from Northstar Video Games. My journey has spanned over two decades, working on everything from family titles to innovative simulators, like Lord Mowing Simulator. Hi, I'm Adam. Together with Nick, we're thrilled to be starting a new venture in collaboration with White Thorn Game. We're here in Liverpool, a city of culture and innovation. You find inspiration around every corner. It's the perfect place to announce our next chapter. Working with Whitethorn, we're crafting something that's unique. It's about transformation. It's about seeing the world in new ways. While we can't share details yet, our project is rooted in creativity and discovery. It's a journey we're thrilled to embark on. Our goal is to create experiences that are easy to pick up, but hard to put down that are relaxing and stare the imagination. As we walk these streets, we're reminded of our mission to blend passion, creativity, and innovation in our games. As indie developers, we believe in creating games that are not just played, but felt and lived. This project is a testament to that belief, and we can't wait to share it with you soon. So, stay tuned. We're just getting started, and there's so much more to unveil. Until then, keep dreaming in colour. We'll have more information to share about Northstar's work in the coming months, so please keep an eye on our socials for the latest news. Next, I'd like to introduce an industry friend of ours who's dedicated to the fight for more accessible games. Here's accessibility critic, consultant, and host of the YouTube series Accessibility, Laura Kate Dale. Hello. My name is Laura Kate Dale, and I'm the host of a video game accessibility focused review show called Access Ability. I'm a white woman with bright blue hair, shaved short on one side, wearing a plain black dress. I've been covering accessibility in video games from the media side for about the past four years, and while we've seen huge strides forward in both the quantity and quality of accessibility support seen in released big budget video games during that time, one aspect of video game accessibility which has been slower to improve is the ways that accessibility information is discussed in advance of a game's release. Most of the time, as a disabled gamer, I have to wait until the week that a game is going to release to find out if it's going to have the accessibility support that I need to comfortably play it. Sometimes you'll see exceptions, developers that detail their settings a few weeks or a few months in advance, but those are very much the exception rather than the rule. Accessibility information is all too often treated as a marketing reveal, something for PR teams to hold on to for an extra dose of promotion in the crucial days leading up to a game finally going on sale. In practice, this means that most of the time when disabled gamers like myself see a new video game revealed, we're torn between getting excited for what was shown and holding on to some hesitancy in case the game isn't going to be playable for us when it releases. We can't fully rely on games to be playable, meaning we have to keep a safe distance between ourselves and our initial excitement. This is why it's so exciting when publishers like Whitethorn Games make the effort to be upfront about accessibility settings and design considerations in their games well in advance of release, with clear and thorough information listed online in easy to locate locations. Putting that information out there early makes a huge difference for me, both as someone covering games from the press side and for me as a disabled gamer. As someone who hosts an annual accessibility focused games showcase every summer, I'm really glad to see that in the past few years, events like the Whitethorn Games Showcase are starting to put accessibility information at the forefront of how their games are revealed and detailed. I understand the desire to use accessibility information as part of your pre launch press cycle, and the fear of announcing an accessibility setting early on in development that you might have to later remove from your roadmap. But being open and transparent early on about accessibility plans means that disabled gamers like myself don't have to wait until a game is almost on sale to know if they can get excited to play it when it releases. I'm really glad that, eventually, this does seem to be where the industry is going. Thanks, Laura. I can't wait for the Accessibility Summer Showcase. Plus, if there are any developers out there who'd like their games considered for the showcase, please send an email to laurakbuzzofficial at gmail.com. 
We've had the honor of partnering with ID and Xbox on a number of initiatives this year, one being the Developer Acceleration Program, which provides many devs from underrepresented communities with a ton of support. They're joining us today to talk more about the program and share some exclusive news. What's up, everybody? My name is James Lewis. I lead the ID at Xbox Developer Acceleration Program. My name is Tomas Gomez. I'm the CEO and founder of Pancake Games. We're excited to be here as part of the White Thorn Winter Showcase with their focus on inclusivity and creating a, a better industry by partnering and shining a light on some awesome creators and awesome games. It really aligns with our missions at the ID and Xbox Developer Acceleration Program, where our mission is to empower underrepresented creators with the resources and information needed to bring their creativity, originality, and innovation to Xbox. We do this in three primary areas. One, provide access to non-recoupable funding so that teams can port their games to the platform. Two, we provide access to information in the form of green room events where studios can learn best practices about bringing games to Xbox. And three, we're piloting a prototype initiative where we're helping new ideas get off the ground. And Tomas, you have experience with all of these. So can you tell us a little bit about your experience with the program and just your journey as a studio? Yeah, um, our journey, We I started the company about three years ago. Uh, very much during the COVID time, everyone was doing some soul searching. I had a conversation with my, my wife if if we were in the right situation to be able to start this company, and she supported me 100% and some. And I started the studio, Pancake Games. I wanted to make a game that I could, one, I wanted to make a game that I could put my all into. And I also wanted to build a game that I could share with people. And so I started working on it. I was doing that for a year. I had worked in the industry like 12 years, 13 years before that. And I felt very confident in my skills and to be able to build a really solid like beginning game, prototype, vertical slice, whatever you want to call it. And I found out <laughs> that it was actually hard to get funding. I wanted to build a small team, but like I, I didn't have the funds to be able to pay people out. All right, so I was just working out by myself and trying to find opportunities to get funding. And it was a, it was a big struggle. And there was definitely like a year in, like every couple of weeks, me and my wife, we would have conversations. If, if, the, if we were doing the right thing and like we wanted to have a kid and like are we are we possibly sacrificing certain things that we don't want to and luckily I had a great conversation with this guy over here and, and got to talk with Xbox and we got into the DAP program and got that initial funding and that really accelerated us and you, even the money was great but it just also just gave me the confidence that i was doing the right thing and allowed me to bring other people on who are also excited about the studio and the project that we're working on slime heroes and now we've grown to a team of like an amazing team of six that are all really excited about the project we're moving forward we got fully funded and now we have partnered with whitethorn who is an amazing partner. They have an awesome, uh, like a lot of services. They're super excited about Slime Heroes and we're excited to share more about our partnership. Yeah, that's awesome. Congrats, mm -hmm. it's yeah. so cool. I've met members of your team. Mm -hmm. I can attest that they are awesome. So to, I'm so glad that you chose to believe in yourself in those moments of like, there's high risk, but maybe I should pursue this. Yeah. You did it, you yeah. pursued it. And now you're, you're, other people are seeing your vision and they're like, yes, let's go. <laughs> and so. I would love if you can just tell us more about the game that you're creating. Tell us about your debut title. We'd love to hear about it. Of course. So the game Slime Heroes, like I said earlier, our goal was to make a game that was very wholesome. It was a world that was very welcoming and inclusive. We, I also wanted to build a game that you could share with people. And so like, we wanted to hit all those things. And the game is focused on the main character is a little adorable slime creature that you'll get to customize and make it exactly the way you want to look. Thank you. And <laughs> then you'll get to explore this world. We have a very, when we design things, we want to allow players to experience the world and mechanics the way they want. And so one of the core mechanics is as a slime, you get to consume abilities from enemies and then mix and match them and create brand new ones. And that allows players to basically build the way they want to experience the world, build the skills the way they want and, and very much explore it uh, how they want it to. Um, we want to be very inclusive and be accessible. And so that, allowing players to do that basically uh, sets the how they want to experience the game. Um, I love it. And I've had a chance to get hands on with the title. Yep. I need you to promise that when it actually comes out, we'll play co-op together. Oh, but yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I'll just kill the spot. Just don't pull me back. No, no, I'm kidding. No, it'll be a lot of fun. Like It'll the be game, a lot of fun. The game, we're trying to design it to where 
it's fun all on its own. You can play by yourself solo, but when you play with a friend, it becomes even more enjoyable. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. That's awesome. Yep. That's awesome. And we're going to check out something today, right? What do we got? We are checking it out. So we're showing off uh, some new content. We're showing off a new area. We're showing off a new boss. And and so with that, we're, we work together with Whitethorn to build this trailer that you're going to see right now. Looking forward into the next year, we of course are working toward more integration of accessibility into our processes and titles. As always, we're not trying to change the vision of our developer partners, but we strive to provide resources to devs so they can make design choices that are more accessible to everyone. Being a three-part team consisting of us, the developers we work with, and our community, we're also hoping to achieve an improved level of resources for our players by providing accessibility information ahead of launch more consistently. Similarly, we want to continue supporting our amazing internal team with continued education. They champion accessibility every day. Hey, I'm Matt White, CEO at Whitethorn Games. Thanks so much for being with us today. 2023 was quite a year, and we are really happy to say that 2024 is full of lots of surprises for you, like some of the ones you've seen today. Our most important value is being a company where the games are for and by the people that we serve. So the games here represent a wide swath of different developers and different audiences. You might be a toddler learning to read with a game like Teacup, maybe a teenager playing dress up in Calico, or even an office worker taking a break from a long day and visiting Providence Oaks with Meredith and Lake. One way or another, the games are for and by a wide and diverse group of individuals. These are just a handful of the things we're here to show you this year, and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this with us today. Stay tuned for more. And that's a wrap on this year's Whitethorn Winter Showcase. Please remember to wishlist and share all of the wonderful titles that we've previewed today. Thank you again for making 2023 a truly amazing year. We couldn't have done it without the support from our amazing community. If you want to stay up to date on any future news or announcements, please follow us on socials or join the discussions in Discord. We hope to see you at next year's Whitethorn Winter Showcase. Stay safe, stay warm, and as always, I hope you have a wonderful evening, afternoon, morning, or whatever time it might be for you. See you around. Bye.